Hello, Will here, you're watching Boosted Autos and welcome to part four in our series on wheel fitment. Now, if you've missed the other videos in the series so far, make sure you check them out. They're linked above my head now for you. We've looked at width, offset, diameter, how to calculate those and what they mean. We've looked at stud pattern, We've looked at hub rings, whether you need those. We've looked at lug nuts. We've looked at everything. So now, in this video, part four, which is the final video in the series, we're going to be looking at bringing all that together and how you actually calculate the fitment on your car to get the overall look that you want. And obviously, tire fitment is a factor in that as well. So we're going to be covering everything in this video. So let's get into it. Tire fitment is determined by three different numbers. So we'll look at it backwards here. You can see we've got the measurements one, two, and three there, or they're printed as well. It's always printed on the sidewall of the tire, so it's very easy to see. So you can see here we've got R19, which is 19 inch diameter. So that's the size of the wheel that it's going to fit. Now 255 in this case is the is the width of the tire in millimeters. So from the sidewall to the side sidewall. Now the 35 is the profile. Now profile is the height of the tire. So the lower the profile number, the skinnier it's gonna be, and the higher the profile number, the fatter it's gonna be. So, and the way that's calculated, what that 35 means is that's the percentage of the width of the tire. So in this case, the tire's profile is 35% of the width. So the wider the tire you've got, the higher profile number you're gonna have there to maintain the same thickness, if that makes sense. So you could have a 225 by 40, and that would be the same profile as a 255 by 35. Now, another important factor to consider is making sure you select the correct width tires for the wheels that you're gonna be putting them on. Now, we've all seen crazy stretched tires. Now, there is a reason why people do that. It's not always just for the look. Now, what happens is as the wheel travels up and down with the suspension, it actually pivots on its axis like this. So it curves in as it goes up. So you can imagine if the car drops down, the wheel's actually gonna tuck. So the way we figure this out is basically looking at the tire specs that you're looking to buy. So the tire specs will always tell you the width of the wheel that they're designed to be fitted to. And you just need to make sure that in most cases you don't go outside those specifications. Now, obviously a lot of the time people do, and that's generally when you're gonna run into problems with defects or you know not passing rego, things like that. So. In my opinion, it's important to make sure that even if you're gonna go for a stretched tire look, make sure you try to keep within the specifications of what's designed for the size of the width of the rim that you're gonna be fitting it to. So the first thing that we need to figure out is how the dimensions of our new wheels are gonna vary from the wheels that are currently fitted to our car. And this allows us to make calculations based off the car and figure out exactly what our end fitment's gonna look like. So there's a really good website called wheel-size.com and I'll link that in the description below for you. And that actually has the stock wheel fitment for a lot of different cars. So if we'll use my car for an example, so BMW, 2 Series, 2014, M235i. So here we go. Now, I don't actually have the original factory wheels on my car, so that doesn't actually apply to me. But if you are basing your calculations off stock wheels, this is a great tool to get you started. Okay, so by now you should have the measurements of the wheels that are on your car. What we need to do now is figure out the measurements of the car itself so we know what our tolerances are gonna be. So the way I like to do this, and there is plenty of ways you can do it, but what I do is I get a weight, like a padlock or something like that, attached to a piece of string. Now be very careful you don't swing it into your bodywork. And what I do is I find the center line of my wheel, so right where the middle of the hub is, and I hold the piece of string up against the guard like that, and I just use some adhesive, that something that isn't gonna mark the paint, so something like blue tack in this case. And I just dangle it there like that. Now what that's done is using the force of gravity, that's given me a straight line to the ground from the outside edge of my guard. So now I know exactly where my line's gonna be for a flush fitment. What I can do now is I can grab my ruler and I can measure from my rim to that piece of string. So we need to wait until that string stops dangling. And we'll move this piece out of the way as well. So I can see there that I've got exactly 2.3 centimeters. So 23 millimeters of clearance there. 
So that means I can move the rim 23 millimeters further out to be flush. Anything past that measurement is going to bring it outside the guard. Now the tire is going to be a factor too, so we'll measure that. And we can see we've got 17 millimeters of clearance there. So the sidewall of the tire is able to poke out a further 17 millimeters before it goes beyond the flush mark. Now, because we understand that the wheel is going to move and pivot as the suspension drops, that means if we lower the car, the wheel will tuck a little bit more. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about lowering the car in this case. What we need to worry about is if there's a lip on the inside edge here. Now, bear in mind that if you do have a significant lip on the inside of your guard, you may need to roll your guards. So you might need to subtract the depth of that lip from your measurement here to make sure you're accounting for that lip or you may need to roll your guards if you're going to go for a completely flush fitment. Remembering again that the wheel is going to tuck a certain amount so if you go for a narrower tyre that's going to stretch on the rim you're going to get a steeper angle like that and you're going to have more clearance for your inner guard. Now the other thing you need to consider is whether there's any clips around on the inside. Sometimes you'll often it's common to have a clip right where the bumper meets the, um, meets the panel here so make sure you're not going to have any clearance issues there and then just move your hand around. You shouldn't have any problems past about the, um, the three o'clock and nine o'clock positions. So just check around, make sure you're not gonna have any problems there. Now, the other thing you need to check as well is brake clearance and inner guard clearance and suspension clearance. So we'll look at that now. Now there's two things that you need to consider when you're looking at brake clearance. The first being whether the caliper itself is going to clear the spokes of your wheel. And the second being whether the diameter of the inside rim of your wheel is going to clear the outside edge of your caliper. So if you measure the radius from the center of your hub to the outside edge of your caliper, you need to make sure that that is significantly smaller than the radius of the outside edge of your wheel to the inside of the hub just to make sure that you've got enough clearance there. Now you can get down to, I wouldn't go closer than about a centimetre, so say a finger width between, and um, that allows for things like rocks and stuff if they get flicked up to be able to clear out and not jam up. So that's the first one. Now spokes are a little bit more tricky because different wheel designs will have different spoke designs. So just because you've got a wheel that sticks out further doesn't necessarily mean that the spoke design is going to give you more clearance. So the best way to do this is to try and do a test fitment if you can, or find somebody that's got the same wheels or has the br same brakes as you that can tell you whether it fits or not. Now, you know, it's, it's, it's a tricky one. Sometimes you can find the actual inner measurement specs of the specific wheel that you're looking at, but that is just something to be aware of to make sure that you're not gonna have any fouling issues with your caliper if you're running a big brake kit. Most stock brakes aren't a problem at all, but yeah, if you're running a big brake kit like what's on this car, then you need to make sure that you're gonna have enough clearance with your spokes and the caliper. Now, the other important thing we need to check is the back spacing to the suspension strut. And you can see the suspension strut there behind the brakes, and that obviously goes right up to the strut tower. So we need to check that the opposing side of the tire here isn't going to touch that strut. So the easiest way to figure this out is usually to just shove your hand in behind and feel how much space with your fingers you have between the tire and the um, closest part of the suspension strut and that'll give you a rough idea of how much space you have to play with there. In most cases, if you, unless you're going a much wider wheel, you're not going to have problems with clearance there, but just check what your, what your inner spacing change is going to be so that you can make sure you're not gonna have any dramas with, with clearance there. The other thing you need to check, obviously, is that your wheel clearances are gonna clear when you, when you turn the wheels, so make sure you're not gonna rub anywhere. And the easiest way to do that is to, again, look at your stock wheels, have a friend turn the steering with the engine running, and just check that you're not gonna foul on any clips or that there's no panels anywhere that are gonna rub with the extra, with the extra diameter and extra width. Now the last factor and perhaps the most important one is your inner guard clearance along the inside edge here. So different cars will have a different amount of lip. I don't know if you can see properly there, but there's an inner lip there. Now what you can do is if your tire is gonna hit that lip, you can actually roll that lip and push it upwards 
so that you get maybe an extra five millimeters of clearance. Now that, that lip depends on the car. Some cars have a big lip there, some cars hard, have hardly anything there at all. The other thing that you can do as well, if you need even more guard clearance, is you can actually have your guards pumped. So what they do is they actually pull the guard out using a special machine that sits on the hub and rolls around. And what it does is it rolls that little lip up, but it also pushes the guard out and pumps it out a little bit just to give you an extra bit of clearance. Now you don't get a whole lot out of it, but you can get it a couple of extra millimeters and sometimes that's the difference between a um you know between fitting and not fitting the final thing we need to understand in this picture is camber now camber is the angle of the wheel in degrees either negative which is tilting inwards or positive which is tilting outwards now in 99.9% .9 of the cases you'd be running negative camber and camber will also contribute to the amount of tuck that the wheel has as it rises and falls under the gut so there's a few different ways that you can adjust camber and it does depend on the type of car but what i'll show you is the most common ways now looking underneath the car here you can see the lower control arm and what that does is that holds the wheel in its position so the wheel will tilt on that axis just there now now as i said before different cars are set up differently but this is a pretty typical suspension geometry for the rear of the car so a adjustable lower control arm allows you to actually adjust the camber and I'll show you what one of those looks like now as you can see there's a bolt there that winds in and out and so if you wind that bolt out what you're doing is you're pushing the wheel on this axis back that way and that makes the wheel tilt inwards now it's pretty much impossible to show you this on my car so I'll show you on a picture of my old car some cars also have adjustable control arms to adjust the front camber, but more commonly you'd be using either camber bolts which bolt into the suspension to make the adjustment, or camber and caster adjustment plates which sit on the top of the suspension strut. As you can see at the top of the strut tower here, we've got one large bolt and then four smaller hex bolts which you can undo. And once they're loosened off, you can actually adjust the angle of the suspension strut in proportion to the camber and caster plate. So if it's oriented as it is in the picture, that's adjusting camber. And if it's oriented front to back, that's adjusting caster. So if we move the strut towards the inside of the car, so to the right in the picture, we're increasing the amount of negative camber on the wheel. And if we move it towards the outside of the car, we're decreasing negative camber. So in essence, what this is doing is it's allowing you to make fine tuning adjustments to your camber in order to get that perfect fitment. Now that you've taken all the measurements off your car and you've got a good idea of the tolerances that you've got to work with, we go back to our website, we go to tyre calculator, and what we do is we enter the specs of our original wheels, or the wheels that we have on the car currently, and then we enter the fitment information for the wheels and tyres that we're looking at getting. So what you can do is you can browse for wheels, and then put in a couple of different, for the wheels that you like, you can put in a couple of different specs that are available for those wheels into here and see how they're going to fit. So we've got our original tires and wheel width and offset, and then we've got our new tires and rim and offset. So in this case, I'm actually going to be running the same tires. Now what we do is we scroll down, we can see there's a couple of diagrams here that explain a few things, and you can actually enter your clearance information in here as well, and it will calculate it for you. But I find that it's safer to calculate it off the car because this doesn't account for a few of the things that we looked at in the, um, in the video earlier. So things like if you've got little clips or lips and things like that, that this obviously wouldn't know about. So it's always best to check on the car. So scrolling down to clearance, we can see wheel one obviously is what's on the car. Wheel two is gonna be the difference. So the rim is gonna be five millimeters closer to the suspension components, which is totally fine. We measured that. The tire is gonna stick out eight millimeters further. We had, a, we had a tolerance of, I think it was 13 millimeters. The rim's gonna stick out 21 millimeters further. And I think we had a we had a tolerance of 23 millimeters in that case, so that's gonna to be totally fine. The wheel well clearance is gonna be the same. The brake clearance, it says, is gonna be the same. Now, this is where it's important to refer back to the um, brake clearance that we covered earlier in the video, because obviously this doesn't account for things like spoke design. So you do need to be absolutely sure that that's not gonna be a problem. Don't take this tool's word for it. So just to quickly summarize for you, what we're doing is we're entering the specs of the wheels and tires that are on the car currently as our base reference point and then the wheels that we're interested in purchasing and the tires that we're interested in purchasing here. And what we can do is if we've got a couple of different sizes available in the rim that we like, we can pick and choose between them here, put in the different sizes that are available and see which one is gonna give us the closest fitment to what we're after down here. Simple as that. 
Okay, so that's wheel fitment. Now, hopefully you found these videos useful and interesting. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you do have anything that you'd like to add to these videos, anything you think I've missed, or any questions that you might have that need further clarification. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.